Hello, hockey fans. The Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. We're on the air for the first time this season, the 2019-20 hockey season. You've got professional, of course, the Minnesota Wild, UMD Bulldog Hockey High School, Jerry, and so much more. And uh, yeah, the juniors. Show number one. Juniors. I mean, that's I'm, a handshake. That is. Yeah, there you go. Hey, how many years is this? This is our 30th year. All right. About time. <laughs> <laughs> and we're I, still above ground. Is this our eighth year? I think it is. Or was last year eight? <laughs> uh, I haven't looked into we'll that one We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a few years. So it looks like another exciting year coming up with high school. The northern teams are going to be good. And UMD, uh, can they three-peat? And the wild, I don't know what's going to happen there. That's going to be a mystery. That is but, a mystery. Uh, you so, know, we'll get to our wild talk. But yeah. uh, I learned today that Zach Parisi's house on Lake Orono is for sale. Oh, he's getting traded. Where's he moving? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I mean, when you sell your house, you got to find another house to live. Uh, yeah. So I'm not sure what's going on. It's a long on ride over to St. Paul from Orono. And, and maybe that's the case. Maybe he's moving just to a different location in the metro. Uh, I... Who knows what when he'll retire? Maybe he but, walks it, and it's a long walk. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe that's why. I, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, here we are on the uh, the cusp, the start of a new hockey season. Uh, the Minnesota Wild, uh, two and four in their preseason play. You know, nothing too impressive there. They lost two overtime games in the preseason. Lost one shootout. What's new? Exactly. They've done that that's, for the last. Ten years when they did this uh, three on three and and uh, shootout. Does my least favorite coach in the NHL, Bruce Boudreau, do they work at failing? I've never in seen. Overtime? I've never seen a team that can't win. They can't even get to five hundred on these overtimes and shootouts. Yeah, that's it's a crazy big issue. Uh, I like to see that be, uh, you know, something that they could work on, but. Uh, a lot going on this season, you know, and, and there's there's still a lot of uh, uh, speculation. New GM Bill Guerin uh, this year, nice guy though. I think Good pick. I was but I surprised. Think you got to uh, give him a. He was with the Pittsburgh when they won the couple championships as an assistant. And I was just out in Pittsburgh for the USHL, and everyone just loved him. And they well, hate to see him go. We'll talk about that. But you talked to some folks about that. And yep. And I got, yeah. and they say he's just the greatest guy. Great, so. great player. I, yeah. Was he a one time player, as cha Stanley Cup champ, and then one time as a GM or assistant GM? Or did he win it twice as I a think player? He, I think he, um, yeah. Nonetheless, Bill Guerin is here. Uh, I don't even want to ask what happened with Paul. F wow. Uh, is it Fenton? Fenton. What, what did happen no there? Idea. Any inside stuff? Do you uh, know anything that hasn't I, been said? Someone told me that there was a lot of uh, things on the inside where the players didn't like him. And, and then I heard that he wanted to get his sons into the organization. And there's just a lot of things that a lot of people took a second look at, you know. Well, uh, Leopold, the owner of the team, he, he put this on his shoulders. He said, I made a mistake. And mm -hmm. like, how do you make a mistake there? Uh, but anyways, uh, we're past that. Bill Guerin, a GM for the Minnesota Wild. Uh, this Tommy season. Curvers is still there then as an assistant GM. Now, what's the latest with Tommy? He's battling He's, cancer. Yeah, but he, I, kind of funny, I just rode with uh, his good friend, uh, Norm McIver. I mean, I flew out to Chicago with Norm sitting next to him and we talked a lot of the hockey stuff and talked a little bit about, he said he's doing real good. He's trying this new treatment stuff. And good. he says he's doing pretty good for what he has. Yeah. So we just got to say our prayers and hopefully everything works out. You know, we taped a show here in the studio uh, in June, three months ago, and it seems like we didn't leave. Yeah. <laughs> so we're back at it. So smile. Uh, <laughs> uh, a couple of things this NHL season. Uh, the Minnesota Wild uh, will start uh, play at Nashville on Thursday, October 3rd. And then they'll be in Colorado on Saturday, October 5th. And then they've got four days off till they play at Winnipeg on October 10th. And then they'll be home to open up the regular season at home 
on the uh, what is it, the twelfth of of uh, October right. against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah, Sid the kid. Pittsburgh going to be good this year? No, I don't think so because their their three main players probably are going to be Malcolm. He's been around a hundred. It's like uh, the Wild, you know. Their main players there, you know, okay, get ready Malcolm. for the senior. Get the uh, Crosby. Sid Crosby. And then the young one, Genzel. Oh, okay. And it's kind of funny. I was I, uh, the main chef for the Pittsburgh Penguins gave me a tour of their. They just built this brand new practice facility. Two ranks. Oh, it's just beautiful. Now, what were you doing there? What was the purpose? The USHL had their uh, fall classic, so every team comes in. The USA development team is in that league. And then they got 15 other teams. So there's different venues, and this year it was in Pittsburgh? Or? Yeah, oh. well, it lasts four years, so they like it out there oh, with, the, with okay. the venue, okay. where it is. And uh, All right. But uh, a beautiful place. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, they took me in there, and they showed the locker room. The locker room's the same as the downtown where they play their home games. And it's a, in a circle, like the Wild, you know, it's in a circle. And then... Back in the, when you first walk in, back there, you see Sid Crosby, and you got Genzel right next to him. Nice. And then right above Genzel is a big plaque yeah. of Mario Lemieux. Boy, is Genzel surrounded by some, <laughs> some great people. Pretty Legend. amazing. Legend. Yeah. I mean... I told his dad that, yeah, I, I told him, you better hang out with your son more. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jer, even on the, uh, on the uh, social media, you're getting uh, quite a reputation as being a legend of the game of hockey yourself. Well, uh, it's a high school. I probably see more high school games. So I don't know if that's good or bad. Yeah. How's the pay? <laughs> oh, terrible. Oh, well, we'll have to work on that. Uh, I just want a gas card. <laughs> So uh, again, it's a passion, Ken. yeah. It's a passion. Minnesota Wild uh, NHL. Uh, well, the NHL kicks off uh, Wednesday, October second. Right. St. Louis will host Washington to open the, the season. Uh, the Wild again start Thursday at Nashville. Uh, One thousand two hundred seventy-one game regular season. Eighty-two games per team will conclude this season on Saturday, April fourth. 2020 and uh, Jerry two teams are celebrating their 50th anniversary this season uh, the Buffalo Sabres and the Vancouver Canucks okay and uh, let's see it'll be uh, two team I mean six teams that started in 67 the North Stars Pittsburgh Pittsburgh St. Louis Keep Phil going. Philadelphia. Philadelphia. And no, what's on the West Coast? it was a California sales at the yeah, time I was gonna say Oakland but okay California yeah. Yeah, and was it the LA Kings? No. I think so. Okay. I think so. Yeah. It's like the name in the sixth original, huh? Yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Well, now, I, you know, I, I, there's, well. I we got a new team coming in too next year. Seattle? Yeah. Do they have a name yet? I think they do, but I just can't remember. I haven't heard it. I haven't heard a name Maybe yet. they didn't. Maybe they haven't. Yeah. Maybe they haven't named it. Okay. So, but that'll be exciting. That'll get you excited how they do it now, how, how they can get a Stanley Cup team the first year. <laughs> the way they can pick off each team. Well, Las Vegas came close, yeah. but no cigar. Right. And, uh, well, yeah, so not, it, are you sure it's not 2022? I don't think it's next year that Seattle comes in. I thought it was. I think it's the following year. And then it's 2022, 20, huh? Well, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll check that we out. Yeah. But we know there's another franchise team coming in. Well, there's four teams that will participate in the 2019 NHL Global Series, and they'll play regular season games in Europe. The Blackhawks and Flyers will play uh, the opening game against each other in Ch uh, the Czech Republic on uh, October 4th at the O2 Arena. And uh, the Buffalo Sabres, Tampa Bay Lightning will face off in a pair of regular season games in Stockholm, Sweden on Friday, November 8th and Saturday, November 9th. So 
There you go. The it's black. different, huh? Going yeah. Over. I was talking to Norm on that, and they're flying, the team's flying over there, and they have a preseason game, too. Yeah. A couple, two or three days before that. This is more meaningful than what the NFL does because there's a lot of players that come from European right. nations. Right. And so this, this makes sense. I don't know if I'm a big fan of the regular season game being played there, do some exhibition games or right. something, but... Nonetheless, I think this is a little bit more uh, meaningful than what the NFL does. And on October 26, the Calgary Flames and Winnipeg Jets will meet outdoors. That's right, October 26. Boy, that's early. Outdoors at Mosaic Stadium in Regina, Saskatchewan. Regina. This is the 2019 Tim Hortons NHL Heritage Classic. What is October 26th? That's a Saturday. Wow. So hopefully it's not too warm in Regina on yeah, October 26th. Look at that refrigeration out there. True, true. <laughs> uh, and there's a lot more here that'll happen, but uh, a rematch of the 2016, I'm sorry, the 2019 Stanley Cup Final will take place on October 26th when the Bruins uh, will play host to the St. Louis Blues in Boston. You know, that's going to be tough for the players, the coaches, the fans to lose game seven in your home arena yeah like they did to st louis yeah but you gotta give them credit they did win the stanley cup a couple years before i mean a few years back no i i, I yeah but to, to lose yeah. it at home is tough uh no doubt about it in a game seven so uh we'll see what happens but uh my hat's off to st louis again you know for yeah. what they did at the second half of the season Going into exactly. the first of the year, they're yeah. the worst team in yeah. hockey, and fired their coach, in and they get this young goalie, and he uh, kind of kept them in a lot of games, and they won a lot of games with him, and he continued through the Stanley Cup. Who was that coach they fired? Ah, that was uh, do 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 Mike Mikey Yo. Mike Yo. And I saw his kid in uh, North American Hockey League uh, a couple weeks ago. When they played up in Blaine. You know, does that put an end to him in the NHL and the coaching position? I think uh, he'll always probably be an assistant. Yeah. It's too bad. You know, Mike seems like a good guy. I don't know right. what his issues were, but uh, coach. Well, if you don't win, I don't care who you are. Look at the Chicago Blackhawks coach. Yeah, Quinville. That came I mean, as a he surprise. Won, he won <laughs> how many Stanley yeah, Cups, and then all shocker. of a sudden, you're out of here. You're not yeah. winning. <laughs> uh, we know who's not getting fired. A two-time defending national champion, Minnesota, I'm sorry, back-to-back, -back, but three-time uh, national champion, Scott Sandlin. Uh, they agreed to a four-year extension. This goes back to this past June. Uh, but Scotty Sandlin's been wrapped up by the Bulldogs. And, uh, you know, you, you look at what uh, uh, the preseason polls, and they pick UMD. Yeah. Well, you got to figure this. They got their goaltender back. The best in the nation, I think. Hunter Shepard? Yep. He's part yeah, of the right. uh, four players uh, that UMD has on the seven-man NCHC preseason all-conference team. Hunter Shepard, there right. he is. Right. And then uh, they got five of their six defensemen back. So the back end's going to be good. Real good. I mean, yeah. you've got like Perinovich and Wolf. And uh, I mean, they're going to miss Mikey Anderson. He was a they heck of a player. Sure. But uh, all the, I mean, then what do you have that they lost? They lost uh, Peter Krieger. Krieger. He was a uh, I mean, decent player. I liked him. Yeah. You know, and he scored. Their captain. Riley Tufty. I think they. No offense, but I think they can replace him. What he did. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but I think they're they can't replace this guy, Parker Mackay. Sure. I mean, he was just Captain. everything. He was a leader. He was, I mean, his leadership, you just can't replace. You know, and he was one of those guys that, you know, was there throughout his uh, career, if you will, at UMD. But when it counted, man, he was there. Showed up. And in the locker room, too. He's exactly. the same way. Exactly. And uh, yeah. Parker McKay will be missed. But who's coming back? Well, Justin Richards, Nick Sweeney, Perinovich, Shepard. The Capes, the two Cape brothers. Uh, Noah and... Uh, yeah, Noah Cates and uh, Jack. Um, I can't what's even his think brother? <laughs> Jack? No. Jason? Yeah. Well, Jason. we got the roster right here. We'll take a look. We'll cheat. Okay. Uh, Jackson. Jackson. Okay. Uh, Dylan Sandberg. Yeah. He's back. Right. He could have uh, left. Yeah. Matt Anderson. But the, I think the main one coming back on the D is Perinovich. 
he was uh, hurt uh, last part of the season and he was playing with a lot of pain and I'm told that he's pretty healthy right now. Can so, we uh, can we talk about some of these freshmen? I just want to get your your thoughts on some of these guys. Okay, I can uh, tell you about the uh, Minnesota. Well, let me just kid. let me just go through some names here out of Alberta. Quinn Olson, forward, freshman forward. Anything on him? I don't know anything about him, but what I'm hearing is he probably of all the forwards coming in, he'll be the scorer. Freshman forward from Minnetonka, played at Penticton. Luke Lowheit. I think he'll look like a freshman his first year, but uh, he's a big boy, and I think he'll get stronger and stronger as uh, he gets into UMD second, third Is he year. the guy that can replace Riley Tufty? Yeah, he could, but I think it'll take him. Like freshman, it's hard coming in that first year. Okay, here's a guy out of the hockey hotbed of Ellsville, Montana, uh, played at Springfield in the NAHL, right. forward freshman Brandon Piracelli. I don't know much about him either. He's not from Minnesota, you know. Remember now, I'm in Minnesota. I follow all these Minnesota well, kids. Well, I said the hockey hotbed of Ellsville, Montana. <laughs> yeah, it is. All 20. And uh, <laughs> do play hockey. <laughs> how about freshman forward uh, from North Branch, played at Green Bay in the USHL, uh, Brady Meyer? I don't know if he's coming in. Okay. He's on the roster. Oh, is he? Okay. But he's on the roster. And finally, uh, from Thunder Bay, Ontario, played for the Wilderness uh, for goalie. freshman goalie oh. Ryan Fanti. Yeah, he played for the Wilderness, and he played pretty good out there. And with Shepard there, you know he's going to watch all season. So he has to get his work and practice. Ben Pat is the junior goalie backup along with Ryan Fanti. But, uh, right. Uh, it's Shepard all the way, you know. Yeah. They're not going to play no the doubt. other goalies. No, so. no, no <laughs> doubt about it. So uh, defending uh, national champion UMD, four players on the seven-man NCHC preseason all-conference team. Again, those players, and Justin Richard, Nick Sweeney, Nick, uh, Scott, Scott Prinovich, and Hunter Shepard. And uh, some of the, well, they got UMD in the North, I mean, the National Collegiate Conference, Hockey Conference. Um, they got Duluth number one for sure, but uh, Denver's going to be right up there again. And. Then Western Michigan, they're, they're, he's finally got some recruiters. His assistant coaches are really recruiting. Murray is the head coach okay. out there. Yeah. And he's finally getting some really skilled kids. Before, he just got these tough kids, you know, and they <laughs> kind of got mean on the boards, but he didn't have the skill to score goals <clears> in them. <throat> but North Dakota, number four. St. Cloud State, five. Last two years, they started the season right there, one or one or two. In all polls, you know. So I think Brett is going to have to start recruiting now his own people and see what happens. I mean, I th I'm sure he's going to do a good job up there. And But uh, to start out the season as five, he's got his, looks like he might have his work cut out. <laughs> mm. In Colorado College, six, Omaha, seven, and Miami, eight. Yeah, you know, again, the uh, media's top pick in the NCHC preseason poll, the defending champs, UMD, I guess it's almost kind of a, an automatic pick to some degree. But number two, Denver, and uh, it's interesting that those two are still, uh, All right. you know, the powerhouses of the league, if you will. They like to show up for the frozen fours. <laughs> So uh, the UMD Bulldogs will uh, start the season uh, with an exhibition game this Saturday, Alberta at Amsoil Arena. And then uh, they're going to host uh, UMass Lowell Friday and Saturday, Friday, October 11th, Saturday, October 12th. UMass Lowell comes to town. Now they played them three seasons ago. They yeah. were out in Massachusetts and both games were, they tied them. But they outshot them in both games, but uh, nonetheless. No, I don't remember that. Yeah. I, well, I looked up the statistics here. I know. Year. I know. I, you do a good yeah, job. I, I had to look into <laughs> it. And uh, both those games went to a tie, but uh, UMass Lowell, uh, the 11th and 12th. And then at Wisconsin for uh, games on uh, October 18th and 19th down in Kohl Center. Glad to see that we got Wisconsin on the ticket. Be nice All to right. have them here. but Maybe they'll come up here next year. Maybe they have a two-year schedule. October 25th, that's a Friday night at Minnesota. Right. And then they'll be here Saturday the 26th, to, so it's a home-and-home home with Minnesota. Right. And then the uh, conference play starts November 8th with Denver here in Duluth. Yeah. 
So the season starts this Saturday, and I tell you, the the wild start, the colleges start, the juniors already started in both the North American and uh, USHL. You know, I was looking at the rosters of all these USHL teams. Two thirds of the player of every team are already committed to a D1. Wow. Yeah. So by the time they say the end of the year, whoever's on that roster, usually 95% or higher are committed to D1. Yeah. That's how good that league is. So that's amazing. Yeah. And last year in the draft, National Hockey League draft, there was 55 players drafted out of the USHL, and that was number one of every junior league in North America mm -hmm. where all the players come from, nearly. I mean... It's just crazy. But I, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the USHL, which is the top tier one league in North America. There's only one in the United States. And, but uh, they got some funny rules. They, they can only have, they have to have three minimum players that are under 18 years old. They, have, they can only have a maximum of four players that are 20 years old. They only can have four import players. But you can have two extra Canadian skaters, not goalie skaters, that don't count toward that four. So, but if you have a goalie, see, well, well, say that again. They can have four imports, like Germany, Finland, Sweden, or Sweden. Canada is not counted as an import. Well, you can you can have two extra skaters if they're from Canada. So you can have six if two of the skaters are from Canada. And what about the goalie part? Okay, if you have a goalie from Europe or Canada. That goalie counts as two. Whoa! Yeah, because I guess they're trying to keep uh, the USA goalies in the league. Okay. So develop them. Oh, I see. So that's why the rule is there. Oh. So it, it kind of hurts you if you take a goalie. Now, are these get. changes that they've made, or is this just always been uh, kind of the... I think most of these, like the 18, but I don't know about this goalie thing, how long they've had All that. right, okay. But uh, I've noticed... These goalies are all like 6'3 to 6'8. And a lot of them are coming from huh? Sweden, yeah. I They're playing the wrong team. sport. They want to I don't. They need that ball. That I, told them, I told them that. They can start a oh. basketball league with the goalies. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then, uh, and then uh, let's see what else is going on. That's pretty much uh, the, the rules that kind of caught my eye on, uh, for the rosters. And then I saw a lot of northern Minnesota kids out there. And some of them are playing before and after, like uh, Blake Biondi of Hermantown, uh, uh, Riot uh, Kaiser, Anaheim, which is a UMD recruit. And let me tell you about UMD recruits out there. I saw about six or seven of them. And the three uh, defense men, they got some good groups co defense coming in. So they can come in next year, really. Hmm. So I, th I don't think they're going to be hurting too much on defense because these kids are got some skill and talent. The forwards, I think it's going to take a little longer. We just got to see how they develop. Right now, I can't give a good grade right now. But, hey, they're young, and we'll see how they develop now. And it's a tough league. I mean, when you see in the USHL where... If you're not moving your feet, you're not moving, you're in trouble because they're so big and fast now. You can't get to these spaces, small spaces. And um, so these kids, they got to learn that real fast, and they got to stay away from the hits because you won't last long if you're getting hit. Seniors this year for the Bulldogs, uh, Hunter Shepard, goaltender Hunter Shepard. Uh, Jade Miller, a forward, uh, he's the guy out of North Dakota. And, uh, you know, you look at this, and Jared Hilderman. He's a senior. Defenseman, uh, a kid from Saskatchewan. And uh, Nick Wolf. That's yep. it. Well, you still don't have that many. Is this team poised not only to three-peat, but maybe, dare I say it, four-peat? Uh, I wouldn't go yet. Let's get okay. this year in. Come on, All let's right. get this year in. Back up. Forget I even said that. Let's then. go for the three. Okay. 
One step at a time. But when you Kenny. look at what they're losing here, they're not losing right. a lot after this season, with the exception you're of gonna, Hunter and Shepard. You're going to lose people to leave early. That's where you're going to lose. Well, you're right because you do have junior. Sharon. I think you're going to lose Sandberg, Perinovich, Perinovich uh, right? right. Kate, one of the, uh, at least one of the Kates. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, looking at the junior class, Justin Richards. Yeah, the mm -hmm. way he played last year. Nick Sweeney. Yeah, there's another one. Okay. So you've got some players that, I mean, if they have a good year, mm -hmm. you don't know. Mm -hmm. Where is the championship held this season? Detroit. Nice. And then, guess where we go the next year? Well, we, where? Pittsburgh. So we, we four-peat in Pittsburgh. Nice. There you go. All right. And then five-peat in Boston. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, this might be a little early, and I, I, I well, anyways, uh, Minnesota Congressman Pete Stobbers of alma mater, Lake Superior State, uh -huh. will host Alabama Huntsville on Saturday, February 15th, 2020, at the GFL Memorial Gardens. This will be the first game played by the Lakers in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Why are they playing it there? The venue is home of the OHL Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. The game will be part of the Lake Superior State University and the University Alabama Huntsville series. It's already scheduled for that weekend and will count in the WCHA standings. And then they're going to play uh, the Friday game at, uh, at the arena f where LSSU host has their games. And then that Saturday game will be in Ontario. All of us at the Western Collegiate Hockey Association are excited to see Lake Superior State and Alabama Huntsville take our game north of the border, said WCHA Commissioner Bill Robertson. Our friend Billy. I want to congratulate the staff at the Lake Superior State for their work to make this unique opportunity a reality. That's a great day for the WCHA. And speaking of the WCHA, Minnesota State uh, pegged number one by the coaches. Right. And uh, did you hear earlier this um, summer that uh, some of the teams are thinking of moving away from the conference? Yeah, the WCHA may be no more, or what happens yeah. there? Because uh, uh, I think the travel out to Alaska on that, they just don't yeah. want that. So we'll see. Yeah. So, hey, another year. Well... Uh, go ahead and reach us at our Facebook page. We have a Facebook page. Find us there and like us there. Well, we have our YouTube channel that we keep going. Uh, we have, uh, what else do we have? We have the regular website, uh, minnesotahockeyconnection.com. And uh, here it is, the start of the new season. I'm excited, Jer. And again, uh, uh, final thought. Well, hockey's starting, and uh, we got the high school elite league going on every weekend. So high school will actually start their season in mid-November, where they start practices. So with every other group, from the pros to the little kids, yeah, they're all getting started. And everything in between. Well, good. Yeah. So UMD Bulldogs start this Saturday with exhibition, and we get things going. You want to thank the staff at PAC TV, where this program is produced. And, uh, Jer, we'll be back here next week to drop the puck. All right.